Yeah. Nice shirt. Hi. Oh, thank you. I love your show. Thank you so much. <laughs> Which one? A little Herb Trimpy. <laughs> Sal Buscema. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We got some John Byrne. We got some John uh, Byrne over there. Yep, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, congrats. That's first my geek of, cred. <laughs> congrats. First half of the season's been, you know, peak shield. I, I really think it shows it. it, it we like to think of it as two thirds. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. You have seen 15. <laughs> yeah, yes. Was, yeah. Well, the, the, is that the cliffhanger? Is that the. the yes. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the one that was written yeah. and directed by Jed Whedon. Yes, that's <laughs> right. the one. That's how we yeah. refer to it. Um, yeah, it was a great episode, we thought. I know everything is under wraps and it's very secretive right now, but, you know, can you tease us at all about, like, you know, what's in store for your characters in the framework, you know, what this reboot, you know, might be challenging yeah, that's them, fine. how it might be challenging them? Yeah, yeah. You know, I know you can't go into detail. Well, I, in general, the what's terrific about it is is that it, it very much is, is a love letter to the fans who've stayed with the show uh, through 80-plus episodes, but at the same time, uh, it, it's creating a world where by changing one simple thing, uh, everything is then changed. And what's important is that, that the viewers know that it's not a dream. It's not a big what if story. There'll be consequences for everyone's actions for what they do in the framework uh, beyond whether or not you, if you die in the framework, you die in the real world. So. That's what's been explain. amazing about acting it. and makes sense given that it was partially created by an incomprehensible magical quantum force in the dark hold and in that world you're in a world and everyone there has had every moment of a life and every blade of grass is real and it's it really makes you question how much more real the world we came from is and the fact that the consequences you die in there you don't go back you know it's, it's been really trippy as an actor so be living in the world that we are living in right now and then to be shooting you know this this show where it's real but it's not it makes you question everything like um what's I, true what's true what is anything what what it, what if someone right now came up to you and said this is all fake there's a real world and that kind of level of gravitas has been so kind of insane to work with and really invigorating as an actor because it's kind of crazy and it makes you, it makes me, I have like weird dreams now, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say that Sky's or Daisy's journey in the next six episodes is to wake everybody up? Is that kind of the goal? I think um, Simmons and Daisy definitely have a huge responsibility. Um, you want to make sure next... everybody's woke. Yeah, we got to we gotta make sure everyone's woke. We have like a huge job of making sure, or of kind of, like until you get woke, cats. but, but, but <laughs> you can't be lit but or best, turned. But the best part about that is, is that that may have been the plan, but as things often happen, when you then go in, it, it what they found was not at all what they expected, and so now it's not as simple the as world anything. itself is something that they have to deal with. Even and though the at the beginning they want to keep saying it's just, it's just yeah. code. It's just nothing. This it's person's like, not real. This person's not real. But there, it's everything is real to all the characters. It's just as real as this life has been for. For us, for you guys, so it's um, it's almost like actors playing a part and then believing that they're actually that person. Yeah, As, so I'm really confused right now. <laughs> because 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 uh, because there's I? on more than one occasion we found Chloe by herself going, <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and we go, you're not doing that in the scene. Oh no, she does it in traffic. Just, exactly. Exactly. Cuts her off. She's just he's. De I'm, I've done it once. In traffic. <laughs> uh, and humans come our way. You want to get me in trouble? You want me to say it's <laughs> hashtag it's all connected? You're the TV uh, boss. And, and and all I can say is is that uh, there's a plan, and when the plan is finally revealed, I'll know about it. <laughs> Well, what's extraordinary is is that it, it has a beginning and a middle and an end. I mean, I, this entire season, really big hats off to showrunners Jed and Marissa and, and Jeff Bell uh, and all the writing staff in the sense that it's hard to believe that we actually began this season introducing Ghost Rider. Uh, it almost feels in a certain way like that was last year. And, uh, and then to shift those gears and go into LMD, which is this who-do-you-trust kind of paranoid thriller, uh, and then now to change it again and have it go and become an alt reality that comments on the the real world that they're in and the real world that we're in and 
having all of those elements put together is an extraordinary reason why Shield has once again become the show that you need to watch the night that it's on. Yeah, yeah it's the best. It's the best season we've ever done. In fact, it's the best three seasons we've ever done because it's got these three separate sections that I, I really stack up against anything. I'm really proud of what we're doing. In a world of specialty TV where there's a lot of, it's it's the land of miniseries right now, and I think that's the kind of content that people, and so to make 22 episodes really turn it into three different seasons and um, give it that kind of, that's I feel like that's what people want to watch right now, and they've done such an incredible job, and it's crazy to think that it was this season that I was running around the east side of LA with like, eight pounds of goth makeup on and like chains in a hundred degree because I and then I, you came to work and then, and then like I went to work and then like it was just weird <laughs> so um, the writers have done such an incredible job Jed, Jed mentioned that you were delighted to find out how you got to do a lot of different stuff now as, in the framework as Colson um, can you talk a little bit about why a teacher is an appropriate vocation for him is there anything you can kind of Jesus about in that regard, or how that you know represents a fantasy of a kind for him. Uh, okay, well, well, it's I was adding it up, and I think it was um, I think it was two thousand seven when I was shooting Iron Man one, and they just kind of kept adding scenes for the guy, and um, and that was a guy who was kind of undercover as a goofy bureaucrat and had a lot more power and shield than he let on, and it's been a long evolution but within a certain within certain parameters and then within the show you know it went from being I don't know what maybe an hour in all the movies together to 22 hours the first season of who's Phil Coulson and this team around him and uh, it's certainly some of the things that he comes from a background and that he's so many of those details got filled in that he was he loves history he studies it he loves the history of shield it makes a lot of sense really that comes if i can boil it down from a desire he says and i think 14 or 15 i just there's so all the grief everything all the loss all the things that i've done that i'm ashamed of all came after i joined shield so it's removing that regret that has him there as a history teacher and what Jed's talking about is to have played this guy for those for that many years within those parameters to kind of be dropped into this alternate world where Hydra's in charge as a completely different, innocent kind of person has been such a thrill mm. and such a breath of fresh air. Yeah. But I think there's one of the things that's so exciting for me is is the moment when you tell Simmons, who you don't know in this world, that you're just a history teacher and and the fact that she argues with you and says, yes, you're right, you are a teacher, you're a leader, you you have an impact, not only speaks to you as, as your character is just a different version of that character, but I think also, and I think that's what the show does so well, is that it always comments on the fact that there are heroes around us in this world. And whether or not they're policemen or whether or not they're, they're nurses or whether or not they're teachers, that, that constantly around us, there are kind of our own versions of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, that, that really make a difference in this life. And teachers are, are something that we think need to be celebrated. That's a great point. And I, I guess that, that makes me think of the other part of this that is so incredible as an actor, this new world that we're in, is we've had this one regret taken away. And that's that thing that I think many of us think about. What if I hadn't done that in that moment? I would be in a completely different life right now. That's amazing to play with. But also the idea of... Well, let's start. Let's, let's your go to that character, place. what they're playing with in this world is who, who is the person essentially and does that start to emerge again mm -hmm. in a different way? That's really thrilling. But, Sorry. but no, what I was trying to say is in your life, because I always love when you tell the story about... How John Favreau called you and said, "Hey, will you come and do and do this little part in Iron Man?" And you sort of thought, "What's a look? Okay, I'll. I mean, it's not. Well, I saw that gonna cast, and it? I thought, man, I'm going to get cut out. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm going to tell everyone I'm in this because I love the comics, and and then it's going to be who do we cut? Jeff Bridges, Gwyneth, or Clark? <laughs> not, not the Am guy I who was on New Adventures? Of I, you know no. what? I don't think they have the same reverence for that sitcom <laughs> as you did. Um, so yeah, I didn't. So if you had said, I, "Listen, so I'm going to go do this," I mean, instead. I was honest. I was a little bit like, no I had just, I had yes. just been 
done a part in something and when I went to see it, it was really tiny and it was embarrassing a little bit. Like I didn't sign up for that gig. And I was like, I'm, this is going to happen again. And my wife was like, you love Iron Man. And I was like, oh, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> and it became this, you know, here I am nine years later. It's a really good point, the tiny choices you make. I'm not sure in all honesty there was a world. I might have been just trying to tell myself I was cool enough to think about saying no because I think I was always cool. <laughs> but in, but in, again, in, in the first time that you came to see us, you got pulled over by the cops and got a speeding ticket. There's a world where you could have at that point said, this isn't, I got I got to go home, I'm so upset, I can't go to that meeting. Oh, hell no, I was speeding uh, to the audition. <laughs> <laughs> trying to pay my rent. Exactly. No. no, but yeah, I mean, I... And you did lie to us and tell us that you were much older than you were, so <laughs> there was that little part. On the pilot, we were celebrating my... I was like, I can drink now, they're like, what? Your people said you were 27. <laughs> I was like, I'm 20. It was kidding. literally we had spent like like two months with her, and then and then her birthday happens, and we're sitting on the set, and and she goes, we said, so what do you want to do? And she says, I want to go someplace where we can have a drink, and I and I legally, and I was like, why were you born somewhere that you you aren't allowed to drink here? She yeah, goes, the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> it was, literally was like, wait, what? <laughs> Which is strange, because she has four kids. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, thank you so much.